How you doing peeps and welcome to Read With Me Friday. Today I'm going to share with you my top five series in YA. As a youth services library assistant, I am required to read about a hundred books a year. And I've read a lot of really great series and I had the hardest time narrowing it down to five but we didn't want to be here all day so let's go number five the selection by Kira Cass the selection is the story about a girl named America who was like a working class family not too low on the totem pole not too high but she is picked out of a lottery to go to the selections which is where the prince of the land of America is now is looking for a wife so the prince or the king gets to be married to somebody he married he meets in a competition kind of like the bachelor but America doesn't want to marry him she doesn't want to marry anybody but this other boy that she meets back home he's got a lower stature than him than her and if she does marry him she'd lose her standing in society but she loves him and she doesn't really care he asked her to go ahead and put her name in the lottery just like everybody else because she had to like she it was her time and so she put in for the selection and she was picked because she took a picture that looked so sexy because she was thinking about her man at the time they took the picture and the prince just thought it was hot. So Maxim picks her personally to be in this election because everybody is ranked by numbers. One in ten. He's a one. She's a five. This is not supposed to work. But when she meets Maxim, they share a common bond, a commonality, and they seem to mesh and then we deal with all the selections one day her boyfriend from back home shows up at the at the palace and he is one of the guards and so her mind is thrown into confusion yet again she knew she wanted to go home before but she had started to like Maxim the prince and now she has to decide whether she wants the boy from back home or the prince and future king. Number four, Nightshade by Andrea Krimer. I don't really do supernatural stories like, you know, werewolves and, you know, cause Twilight kind of ruined that for me. I'm just not a fan. And so I said, well, maybe if I start reading something with werewolves that's not Twilight, maybe I'd end up liking it. So I picked up this story. It's about a girl named Kala who was supposed to marry an alpha, which I don't remember his name because it's been a minute since I've read this story, but I don't remember the alpha's name. But Kala has got to marry him and join their packs together to make one new generational pack as the older pack just kind of myself. But Kala is a girl. You don't think about her as a wolf in the beginning because she's a girl and then all of a sudden they're wolves and it's like really intense like it's an intense story but again we're talking about a girl who has to choose between one boy and the other I mean I guess that just tends to be my groove with these stories but they make some such interesting stories now the Nightshade series come with prequels that have to, have to do with how these people became became wolves. See what I love about this series is that they give you a kind of scientific reason for why these people are the way they are and it's just not all fantastical. It's got some reasoning to it like I can see where the author's coming from. It makes it more realistic and like totally possible that this could be a real thing so that's why I like this these stories number three and don't hate me for this but it's the Hunger Games the Hunger Games is number three only because I did not like Mockingjay very much I 
loved. I devoured The Hunger Games. And my favorite one is um, the second one. Because right now, my brain doesn't want to work. But I love the series so much. And then the movies just made it so much better. I'm excited to put this in the list because, I mean, we all know the story about a, a, a divided country, 12 sectors, and a girl that volunteered from the poorest sector to go and play in a game so that her sister didn't have to go in a, a Hunger Games and probably die. Great. And also, there in that one, you got two boys to choose from. And I don't really understand what it is about this two boy situation, but that seems to be like a, a genre thing. YA is so very interesting in that way. Number two, The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Mayer. The Lunar Chronicles are amazing and these have a lot of peripheral stories as well actually all um, this election and nightshade and the lunar chronicles have these extras that you can just draw from this universe and it's so great um, the lunar chronicles is a retelling of our normal fairy tales like I'm a really really big fan of once upon a time and that's great retelling of the fairy tales so while I've have been a very big fan of Once Upon a Time. I keep looking at the bookshelves and I keep seeing Cinder. Cinder, like Cinderella. And so I picked up that book one time and I have been stuck ever since. They have the story of Cinderella, Little Red Riding, Little Red Riding Hood, Snow White, and, and Rapunzel, and then Fairest which is a peripheral story, it's all about the evil queen, which is my favorite character in Once Upon a Time. Such a great story. It's um, based in the future. Cinder is a cy cyborg. She was, she had been in a really bad accident when she was younger and she was taken to the East Empire, which is China, to you know, live with this new family. And then her dad died of a devastating disease called Letimosis. And it just, once it got a hold of you, it never let go. So once she got, once, then she was left there with her stepmother and sisters, you know, until she was 18. And one day, the Prince Kai came to her shop because she was a mechanic. Because as a cyborg, she had this connection with machines and he had a broken robot and that robot had some information that he needed so he brought the robot to her to fix in the process of all of that she got embroiled in some international th and you've got little red riding hood who is the granddaughter of the person that saved a princess from the moon and you've got Cress, who is actually stuck in a satellite between the earth and the moon by herself. Winter, who has been a princess stuck on the moon with the evil queen, Lavana. It's, it's a very good, it's very good. You should read, definitely should read. That's, that's why it's my number two. And my number one, of course, or would I say, Harry Potter. Who doesn't know about the story, whether you've read it or you haven't read it because you are are Christian and you don't believe and you should read anything witchcrafty. I get it. I'm a Christian. I understand. But everybody knows about Mr. Harry Potter, about this 11 year old boy who lived all his life in a lie to come to find out at 11 through a letter that he is a wizard and he spends the next seven years of his life fighting a villain that is threatening to kill the whole world and he fights him and he beats them and with him and his friends i think it's the only story that has a boy lead that i really 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 enjoy i have read all of them but i've got so many more series that i like like george and nicholson series and 
you know, all these other, oh my gosh, I could go on and on. But that is it. You got my top five. I hope you like this video. Hit the subscription button. Look, check out in the description. I've got all the links to all the books that I've mentioned here that you can get them if you haven't read any of them or whatever. It's down in the description. Let's check it out. Hit that like button and share with your friends because you're going to come and read with me every Friday. Until next time, much love. Bye.